Previously on the Downscaling Chronicles. The Core U2 family of scalers, particularly the TV1750, is a versatile unit that takes up to 1080p and outputs 480i and 240p. But all that flexibility came at a cost. It had the burden of 1 to 3 frames of lag, and apart from sharply downscaling 480p, 720 and 1080p were downscaled with a combination of dropping and blending lines, sometimes churning out a soft 15kHz picture. It's a great scaler if you can overlook these shortcomings. But a new challenger wants a shot at the title, and its secret weapon is Fusion. In the early years of discovering downscalers, our only options were a handful of rare and expensive devices to play modern games in 240p. The landscape, however, completely changed when developer Rama released a custom firmware to flash on an ESP board, turning the low-cost GBS 8200 and 8220 scalers into a GBS control. And its mainstream coverage opened the floodgates wide open allowing CRT enthusiasts to experience the mystique of downscaling. There's several variations of pre-built units found online, but if you like to do it yourself, then check out Retro Barberino's excellent guide, which I followed to build mine back in 2020. And given the wealth of documentation online, I'll entirely skip over the modification. Updates have since been released to add an optional OLED screen for basic functions, but it doesn't completely circumvent using the browser for all the other controls, which I've lost count the number of times the Wi-Fi gave me issues. I've only seen few accounts online of successfully downscaling RGBHV through the VGA input, and I'm with the majority that just gets an unstable picture so it's best to input combined sync or just use component. As for output, to avoid powering another device like an Extron RGB interface to combine HV sync, I'm using Steve's passive sync combining circuit to output RGBS through SCART. If your CRT has component input, then you just need a VGA to component cable. Going off my wish list for the ideal downscaler, which includes 240p and 480i output, compatible with input resolutions up to 1080p, no scaling artifacts and low latency, and has easy manipulation of the picture size and position. As a standalone scaler, the GBSC outputs a low lag, clean 480 to 240p downscale, and with the clock gen installed, prevents screen tear for smooth scrolling. And as a rough time that I've had with the user interface, all the picture settings are there. And for what it does in the realm of downscaling, it does it well. But it otherwise falls short with no downscaled 480i output and the inability to handle 720 and 1080p input resolutions. So that means no downscaling the PlayStation 4 Pro, a PS5 or an Evercade. But what if another device does the heavy lifting by downscaling these resolutions to 480p, ready for the GBS to work its magic? I've previously featured this HDMI to component scaler and praised it quite a bit. It was purchased sometime in 2018, so I don't have a valid link to this one, but have found other listings with similar descriptions. And what you need to look for are capabilities of 720 and 1080p input and mainly 480p output. And if it can also output 480i, then it's looking even more promising. So this little scaler inputs and outputs an array of resolutions, both interlace and progressive, 50 and 60 hertz, making it a no frills, anything to anything scaler. As 720 and 1080p inputs aren't compatible with the GBS, I first wanted to see how it handles downscaling to a GBS friendly 480p. Using my Tang Nano Time Sleuth, lag for 720 down to 480p counts from 0 to 1 frame. 480p to 480p isn't a simple pass through and slowly counts down the lag. 3, 2, one! Yeah, it's 
back to 17 milliseconds, you piece of shit. Unfortunately, my budget version time sleuth doesn't output 1080p. And I tried the same side-by-side -side lag test that I did for the Core U using the Mr. FPGA's dual output. The scaler just wouldn't display a legible picture. So lag in 1080p remains a mystery. From what I can test, it's a fast scaler. Therefore, pairing it with the GBS for total lag should be the sum of both devices, and keeping in mind that the clock gen will cause some variations. So the total lag when double downscaling to turn 720p to 480p, to then downscale to 240p, resulted in 0.4 to 1.4 frames of variable lag, which is commendable. I previously used the Spears & Munsell Blu-ray with a PlayStation 3 to get a visual idea how the Core U downscales each resolution, using a static circle called the Jaggies and scrolling lines called the Upsampling Error Pattern. For 720 downscale to 480p through the HDMI component scaler, the Jaggies pattern was, well, jaggy, and the Upsampling Error Pattern had a case of the wobbles. Skipping straight to 1080 down to 240p through the two scalers, I couldn't believe how uniform and crisp the jaggy circle looked, also drawing to only a single field without appearing to line average, which also resulted in having the best upsampling scroll out of all the downscaled resolutions. As for picture adjustments, this is where both scalers fall a little short. When downscaling, the HDMI scaler retains some of its sharpness by partially cutting off the borders. And once put through the GBS, the missing edges are completely lost in the vacuum of overscan. This renders Tears of the Kingdom almost unplayable if I can't even see how many hearts Zelda has left. It's Link! Zelda's the princess, you fool! Yeah, I deserve that one. Well then, what if I use the picture adjustments to pull in the overscan? Vertical adjustments don't seem to do anything at all, and reducing the horizontal width only gets me so far, until I hit the borders of the lost overscan. Hey, what the hell happened? Ah, I should have known the aspect ratio police. Okay, so downscaling 1080p maybe just wasn't meant for a 4x3 display, even using the BVM 16x9 mode. But the overscan is just as bad on my widescreen 15kHz CRT. So I figured that downscaling 1080p is really only suitable for games that don't display anything of importance in the far edges. Changing the Switch's resolution to 720p at least pulls in more video, but doesn't scale down as elegantly as 1080p. Check this out. Shredder's Revenge was drawn in a 480 by 270 resolution, which is a perfect 4x integer of 1080. So I'm not sure why 1080 downscales so well to 240 instead because everything from text to sprites draw perfectly down to each scan line. It's really a marvel to see up close, especially when compared to the messier 720 and 480p downscales. Every line is cut to precision, and a picture this sharp almost makes me not care about the heavy overscan. A pixel-perfect sharp scale overall comes down to the original resolution the 2D pixels were drawn in because downscaling Sonic Media from 1080p has some areas spilling over into neighbouring scanline fields. The last row of Sonic Shoe in particular is neatly separated from the grass underneath when the switch outputs 480 and 720p, but outputting 1080p blends the shoe's final row into the first line of the grass. And moving the picture up and down using the GBS's web interface shifts the entire scaled image without changing the field the beam is drawing to. As I was playing in 240p, I did notice several instances of vertical screen tear in all of the Switch's output resolutions, occurring roughly three times every minute. And with the clock gen installed in the GBS control, 
I'd say the culprit is down to the HDMI scaler, and it's a real shame. As I've mentioned in previous videos, my preference for playing downscaled modern 3D games is interlaced 480i, which the HDMI to component scaler is up to the task. It unfortunately doesn't remember the last output resolution each power cycle and defaults to a 720p output. So to avoid sending a higher resolution than what the CRT can handle, I've had to memorize the amount of times I need to push the resolution button to output 480i. The GBS can downscale or pass through 15 kilohertz video. So my thinking was that I can just have the scalers downscaled 480i pass through the GBS to avoid disconnecting any cables. But when I did pass through 480i, it kind of did that jerky re-interlacing that I've seen before with the picture adjust box. Maybe not as harsh, but there's definitely more flicker than outputting the scalers 480i video directly into the BVM20F1. That's a bummer, but I could circumvent this by using a passive RCA switcher. Unlike SCART, RCA connections are bi-directional. So a 2-in-1 out switcher is also a 1-in-2 out distributor. Therefore, I can have the HDMI scaler connected to the common input in the middle and then connect the GBS component input on one side and then the CRT input on the other for bypassing the GBS when outputting 480i. 720p down to 480i has 0 to 1 frames of lag and produces an acceptable jaggy circle. 1080p down to 480i has slight transitional motion and the jaggy circle has thick line coupling. Regardless if I set the Nintendo Switch to output 720 or 1080p, when downscaling to 480i, there was a lot of combing on 2D sprites. But I reserve 480i downscales for 3D games anyway. Doom Infinite doesn't look too bad at all, with no major combing and fairly fluid motion. Up against the Corio 2, the GBS Scalar combo comes out on top with overall less lag and slightly better static downscaling. The biggest gain overall from the combo was unlocking 720 to 240p downscaling, which showed the most field of view without needing any picture adjustments. But the Scalar has its own flaws, like screen tearing, thick line averaging when downscaling to 480i, and unrecoverable overscan, which sometimes renders 1080p input resolutions almost useless. It's also a much less elegant solution, both on the software and hardware side, requiring a spaghetti of wires. Whether it's just a proof of concept for some, or a viable option for others that already have the hardware, this can fill the GBS's gap in 720 and 1080p downscaling and 480i output. My thoughts on the GBS as a standalone device haven't changed. That it's an accessible, low lag and affordable option for those that want to satisfy their 240p downscaling curiosity. But for now, my search for the ideal scaler continues. Thanks all for watching and happy gaming.